Well, originally when when the Course of Miracles was first received by Helen Shuckman and taken down with shorthand notes and and it was um, then Helen read the shorthand notes and basically her her boss, who was her collaborator, Bill Thetford, put it, wrote it down. And the first document that appeared was called the Urtext. And in the Urtext, Jesus had a lot to say about sexuality. In fact, the published version that most people read when they go and buy it at the bookstore is, is an edited version of the Urtext. Uh, one time I heard one student say, Oh yeah, I've got the published version, it's the nun's version. Uh, they took out all the sexuality <laughs> out of it, it's just for nuns to read. Actually, it was Jesus had, it was more for the, more for the general public. And, and uh, you might say that, that your question relates to a question we talked about last night, which is uh, distorted miracle impulses. The sexuality is definitely in the realm of distorted miracle impulses. Uh, because the call is always to return to God. That's what a miracle impulse is. It's a call to forgive the world, release the ego, and remember your true identity as a creation of God. But through the ego's lens of lack, then those distorted miracle impulses come out on the surface of consciousness, way out there in the perceptual world and the body, as cravings. And, and sexuality, you know, Typically when people talk about sexuality, they talk about sex drive, libido, and so forth. And then, on top of that, just we'll call it the plain sex drive, then in terms of other overlays, we have these things where there's uh, distinctions around heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual. You know, it's quite finely refined. And there's lots of morality around that. What's good, what's bad, what's evil, you know, God will strike you blind for this, but no, this is fine. <laughs> God doesn't mind if you make a lot of babies, just do it with one partner and put lots of care and attention in raising those babies. But, oh, certain groups and certain philosophies, theologies say, oh, homosexual, oh, bi oh bisexual, transgender, oh, you know, oh. But here, we're, we're pretty close to uh, San Francisco, so it's good to talk about these things, you know, where it's... Oh, 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 don't you go there. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a lot, but, but basically, if you start to cut through all that and you get back down to, you know, that the, the sexual drive, like I talked about last night, as well as hunger and thirst, some of you remember Abraham Maslow, you know, he, he had a beautiful hierarchy of, of needs and he drew this little pyramid and actually right down there, there were the base needs, uh, you know, for food and water and sexuality was right in there as, as a need, human need. And then you work your way up to more towards a sense of love and then as you get to the top of the pyramid, it's the meta needs or the being needs, the B values, you know, these were things that, that when you go into self-actualization of know thyself, you know, things change from your consciousness when you're down at the base to when you come up to the higher self-actualization. And uh, it's an interesting side note that, uh, that Bill Thetford, who was the collaborator with Helen Shuckman to to bring the Course, you know, into being for it all. In his past, he had been a graduate assistant of Carl Rogers. Mm -hmm. And Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow are kind of thought of as the, the core, some of the core founders of humanistic psychology, which was a forerunner to transpersonal psychology. And California is filled with transpersonal psychologists. It's wonderful. Transpersonal, transcending the personal, coming to the actual, to the real. So, the sex drive is a distorted miracle impulse. And in the Urtext, Jesus will make some light distinctions in there and will address a little bit around homosexuality and heterosexuality. And he, 
he even quotes Virginia Woolf um, in the Ur text, and there's some really interesting things in there. But I would have to say, if you really want to cut to the chase and get to the core of things, you have to bring it down to see that as long as you have a belief system in lack, that's the filter or the prism in which these distorted miracle impulses flow through into consciousness and you have to clear the mind away, as Buddha says, empty the mind of these, these unconscious beliefs in order to get this beautiful straight uh, miracle impulse without any kind of distortions. So, when you take it down to the core, you start to realize that, that it's not like Jesus condemns anything. There's not a condemnation involving um, sexuality, or homosexuality, or heterosexuality, or, or bisexuality. It's more like he's, he's so interested in bringing it back into the mind, and getting to the root of the distortion. It's, he's not really m moral. I know a lot of people say, oh God, what are you saying? Jesus isn't moral. He's not really so much into morality and ethics as he is into purity. And, and a lot of morality and ethics involves beliefs and theologies. And there's much contradictions. I mean, if you go around to different cultures, you'll find a huge rainbow of beliefs around sexuality. What one culture says is moral, another culture says is immoral. What one culture says is ethical, another one says is unethical. And this is the same with, with uh, even around violence or, or killing. It seems to be there's more, it's more common, commonly accepted in the theologies that thou shalt not kill. But then, you know, we always have exceptions to that even. So, that's the most important thing. And, and really the solution is, is that's what The Course in Miracles is about. It's about getting in touch with the higher wisdom, the higher self, the Holy Spirit, whatever name you want to use, and, and being guided and to clear away the, the false debris, to clear away the darkness so that the light can shine through, you know, unhindered and without distortion. And that's why we would say that instead of giving straight answers like a lot of spiritualities try to give hard and fast answers on sexuality, it's really open to very much to individual guidance. That when the mind is asleep and dreaming, the Holy Spirit will reach the mind right where it believes it is. So for example, if somebody seemed to be, we'll say what the world would call, very promiscuous with sexuality. Very loose and promiscuous. Free sex, free love, on and on and on and on. There's chances are when the Holy Spirit starts to work with that mind, there will be some definite instructions on, on bringing them back more to what we'd say towards center um, and coming in deeper and deeper. So it's not unusual that somebody who is extremely promiscuous may get guidance to, to go through a period of, of celibacy uh, just to, to take a look at the thoughts that are underneath. And likewise, if somebody would be, we'll say, very, we'll say, sexually inhibited and very, very res reserved in that area, the, the chances are that the guidance would, would again be guided, might be to uh, go skinny dipping or, you know, <laughs> you know, to have sex as guided and so forth, as a way of loosening. If the mind gets so locked, you know, into certain patterns, the spirit has to use ways to, to un, unstick them, you know, unstick them from their, their patterns. And you see that, that that goes way beyond these discussions of, of morality and ethics. It's really what will serve to loosen the mind from the grips of guilt, is really what, what it's about. So let's say if somebody is, is extremely inhibited, um, it wouldn't be surprising that uh, the Holy Spirit might guide them to a sex therapist who may work with them on their emotions and thoughts and have them start to loosen up around it. Um, and, and likewise, you know, that's why when we talk about this topic, it, it is really highly individualized. We, we, we aren't trying to just give hard, fast answers. Uh, you know, when people say, well, homosexuals will 
are, are going to pay for pay for this, or they're going to burn in hell, or this and this. You know, God is not a punishing God. Um, it's it's like the 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 movie uh, What the Bleep Do We Know, where uh, Ramses like speaking through Jay Z Knight and is basically saying, you know, you're it's a progressive evolution of consciousness. And it's just, you're drawing higher and higher in consciousness towards perfection, towards divinity. And it's not so much that there's a right or wrong, or there's not this punishment concept. There's no hellfire punishment concept that has anything to do with, with Source or with God. But it's more of what will serve to take me higher, what will serve to awaken me, what will take me into forgiveness, is always the question. And that relates to everything. Sexuality, food, finances, across the board. And so you can see this is a course in changing your mind about your mind. And it's so different from the theologies and the religions of the world, which basically have pronouncements. You know, don't wear a hat in church. You know, oh boy, it's in the Bible. Oh goodness, better get that little baseball cap or that doorly off your head, you know. So you're going to pay for that one. You know, this isn't some kind of anthropomorphic God who's like watching human beings going, now, I told you not to wear that hat in church. <laughs> and I've told you over and over, and so have the elders of the church told you. And it's right there, in, it's in, this, in the creed, you know. And so get that hat off there. Don't go into that. You know, it's just spirituality, true authentic spirituality is just not like that. 